My name is Lizu Shabala. I'm a student at TUC, currently studying biomedical technology, first year. And today I'm going to doing an online presentation. Yeah, my guest is the first time for everything. And today will be my first time capturing and uploading a video to the internet. Courtesy of Ms. P, my immuno lecturer. So, I just want to wish myself the best of luck. Before I begin, there are some things or processes that need to be understood. Like, what is an antigen and an antibody? An antigen is a substance that is not produced by the body. It is foreign to us. It stimulates the production of antibodies and has to be introduced, meaning it has to come into our system so it can induce an immune response. An immune response is basically the production of antibodies. An antibody on the other hand is produced by us and it responds to the presence of an antigen. So if an antibody sees an antigen, it quickly tries to contain it from spreading into the rest of our body and infecting all other parts of our bodies. So the antibody holds, holds the antigen down and waits for the phagocyte to come in phagocytosis. Phagocytosis literally means destroy it. In order for you to understand this process like I do, I think this will help. Let's pretend that this is an antigen. Quite skewed looking, huh? Antigen. But since no one actually knows what it looks like, we can draw it as we please. And let's pretend that this is the human body. Not really a narcissist, but as long as you understand. So this is the antigen. It goes into our system by any type of infection. So the antibody sees the antigen and comes and holds it down and coats it all around it, prevents it from moving any further and infecting every other organ in the body. Then it waits for the phagocyte to come in. The phagocyte comes and eliminates the antigen by phagocytosis. So my understanding of, the whole, of this whole process is like this. I just pretend that the antigen is a bad guy, like a criminal or thief in the real world. And the antibodies are like policemen. The policemen capture the antigen and put cuffs on them and send them to jail. Then they go to court and meet the phagocytes. The phagocytes are like the judges. The judges give the final word and the final word for phagocytes is phagocytosis which when I translate it I could say is the death sentence. Killing them. Well this is just my understanding, but I think we we'll get the picture by now. So that's how our bodies protect us from harmful substances. There are two types of antibodies, IgG and IgM. These are produced depending on whether it is a primary or secondary immune response. IgM is produced by the primary immune response and IgG by the secondary. But today, my primary focus is going to be on IgG, which is produced by the secondary immune response. What you have been staring at for the last four and a half minutes is basically the structure or the imaginary structure of the IgG molecule. The letters I, G, G are abbreviations. 
the capital letter I and small letter G stand for immunoglobulin and the capital letter G represents the type of heavy chain which in this case is gamma there are four other types of heavy chains mu alpha delta and epsilon so there are five hints also the other four we won't be discussing today we'll leave them for another day IgG is the only antibody molecule that is able to cross the placenta meaning it can be transferred from mother to child through a pregnant woman that is the antibody molecule is made up of two chains the heavy chain which are these long ones and two light chains these semicircular, semicircular structures are called domains and each domain has dicyte forms each and every domain the point where the heavy chain bends is called the hinge region which is over here the antibody molecule is further divided on top it's divided over here this part of here is called the variable region and the rest of this part is called the constant region the variable region contains two domains one from the heavy chain one from the light chain the constant region contains four domains three from the heavy chain one from the light chain these domains are also named according to the region they are in and the type of chain they are in this domain of air is called the variable heavy domain because it's in a variable region and in the heavy chain this one is called the variable light domain because it's on the variable region and then the light chain the rest of the domains are also named in the same way that those who are named this domain is called the constant light domain this one is the constant heavy domain and since there's three domains in the heavy chain this is the constant heavy one constant heavy two constant heavy three this whole process occurs within our bodies and within our bodies are enzymes and there are enzymes which cleave and cleaves mean break which break down this antibody molecule there's the pepsin and the pepain pepain breaks it into three equal pieces it breaks it over here and over here making this one piece another piece another piece all three pieces contains four domains these two domain these two pieces have a light chain and heavy chain and this one only has two heavy chains That is where pepain acts and these three portions of the antibody molecule these top ones since it has two domains of the heavy chain and two domains of the light chain is called F A B which stands for fragment antigen binding and this side too is the FAB then this side over there is called the FC region which stands for fragment crystallizable another enzyme that acts on this antibody molecule is called pepsin pepsin and it leaves this molecule over here dividing it into two right over here and the side two so it divides it like this the top portion and the bottom portion the top portion 
consists of the full light chain and half of the heavy chain and this side to the full light chain and half of the heavy chain and the bottom is half of the two heavy chains 